where brevity is paramount. Hello, Merry Christmas, and welcome to the first of two Chet and John's Reassuringly Finite Gaming Playlist Christmas Specials. This is our top 10 game of the year list, but it's not a top 10, it's actually a top 20. Top 20, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, my, uh, my day job, every year they ask me to do a top 10, and for the last two or three years, I've had to do it a top 25, uh, just because there's so many, there's just so many good games released these days that I just I couldn't, I couldn't whittle it down to 10. And we're not going to do 25, we're going to do a top 20, but... Um, you know, just to illustrate, there's a, I had a shitload of games that I couldn't even get into the top 20, so I haven't even got Spec Ops The Line, which I would have put money on being in the top 20, Binary Domain, Black Ops 2, Syndicate, XCOM, Sleeping Dogs, Lollipop Chainsaw. I mean, it's ridiculous, the, the games that aren't on didn't yeah, make my top that, 20. Yeah. Tech and Tag Tournament 2, That's another fucking, one. Um, Spelunky was one of my boys, but I didn't quite make it, so yeah. Fuck yeah, so it's ridiculous. Indeed. Um... So yeah, we might as well. What we're gonna do the the rundown twenty to do this do twenty to eleven quickly and then to do the ten properly. Top Real time. talk. Uh, I'll start then, shall I? Yeah. Right. My number twenty. My twentieth favorite game of the year is Max Payne three. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a love letter for the fans. If you've been waiting for that game for however long. I think you can't fail to have been happy with it. It was all about technical flash, loads of replay value, rousing set pieces. Um, uh, there was no. Re- I like. I like the ballsiness of the fact that there was no replenishing health bar, so it was properly old school, properly Max Payne. Um, and yeah, just a, a, a hell of a package. The multiplayer was terrific as well. Uh, indeed, my number twenty is uh, Sleeping Dogs, um, an excellent, very slick open world game. Um, really distilled everything into just being as balls out action orientated as possible, without having to veer off into the um, Saints Row style absurdity. Nothing wrong with that either. Yep. Um, Real, real nice. It's going to be a franchise, I think, because it did very well. Uh, and kind of a, a love letter to, to Hong Kong cinema as well. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, uh, gutted it's not on my list because I, I, I forgot how much I love that game. Um, uh, my number 19 is Pro Evolution Soccer 2013. Uh, it, it's pretty much the moment people have been waiting for and the moment that's threatened to come along for a long time. It's where I think, I think you agree, it's better than FIFA this year. Um, for me yes yeah and Konami I think have just absolutely excelled themselves and yeah it's my football game of choice for the year and I just hope that they don't fuck it up again although they probably will standard yes uh, my number 19 is Super Hexagon on iOS uh, and it's now on PC but on iOS Um, a brilliant uh, arcade style um, perfectly suited to the the format piece of work Uh, I think it only cost 69p Uh, addictive um almost hypnotic I'd say extremely difficult in a very fair way and uh, deserves all the success that it's had uh, genuine um, okay my number 18 is Borderlands 2 um, in many ways it was a model sequel it was more of the same better bigger funnier uh, I just thought it was uh, superior to the first game which I liked enough but but not quite as much as this one um, and if you were playing with if you wanted to play a game with four people that's uh, online four players co-op is just pff. Brilliant. Cool. My number 18 is Black Ops 2. Um, solid multiplayer. Uh, Treyarch does good maps. Um, very enjoyable campaign that I thought was a bit ropey at first, but really won me over. And um, some new ideas in there as well. Some cool um, choices. They're, that's kind of the, th- the thing to do at the moment, but uh, they did them well. And um, the craziest post credit sequence in video games history, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, again, another one that should be on my list, but it's not. When I say it should, it means that it's... I don't even know why I said that. Um, yeah, probably my favourite Halo campaign. Um, Halo yeah, campaign, yeah. Call of Duty, <laughs> uh, because my number 17 is Halo 4. Um, an outstanding Halo game, which is not what everyone was expecting. Um, and the package was great. I just, I, th- We spoke <laughs> so excessively about it when it came out that you should go back and listen to that. It's just it's an exceptional game, Halo 4, really is. Yeah, my number 17 is uh, Trials Evolution. Um, an almost faultless game, but I've had, I guess, 16 better game experiences this year somehow. Uh, when it first came out, I thought that nothing was going to touch it. I thought this might be the one for me. Um, same thing happened with the original Trials. I eventually just got a bit 
bored of how incredibly difficult it does get. Uh, the multiplayer modes are great. The downloadable stuff's amazing. Uh, one of the best value games in history. And um, even as I'm talking about it, I think maybe it should be a little bit higher on my list. But uh, I am denied about all of this extensively. Yeah, uh, that's like another game I completely forgot about. That's superb. I don't necessarily think it would have been in the top 20, but... Um... Because I did, I did find it quite abrasive in the end. But I mean, a, just a marvelous package, and uh, yeah, a bit of a masterpiece. Much as I uh, didn't gel with it. Uh, my number sixteen is Assassin's Creed Three, uh, an incredibly unusual, incredibly daring. I think very experimental, and like I said, just, it's just unusual. And I think people sort of gave it a bit of a kicking, kicking for not being not what it, what they expected from it. And I think it was so much more interesting than that. And that's you know one other reason why it's been Ubisoft's year. They've just they've done things that I think for an, for an industry full of people who are looking for like art's the wrong word, but things that are a little bit you know, that take risks that did, and it didn't get anything like the recognition it deserves. And the multiplayer was amazing as well. Uh, still need to play it. We'll do one day. Um, my number sixteen is XCOM. Uh, maybe would have got higher on the list had I had time to finish the game. One of those ones that I wasn't on a review for. Um, extremely impressive uh, version of a genre that I've never had a problem with, but have never been completely into. Um, I love the way that you uh, name your own soldiers and you get attached to them. Everyone talks about it in XCOM, but it's very, very true, and you, your own stories are created within. And um, enjoyed all, every single moment of it, 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 it massively. Just looking forward to going back, and I think I'm probably about halfway through doing the second half, so it would have been higher, I think. But yeah, I'm in the same boat. It's a game that I wanted to go back to and play some more. Didn't have the time. Um, my number fifteen is Super Mario Brothers Wii U. Um, Super Mario Brothers U, whatever. It's the best Mario since Super Mario World, as far as I'm concerned. Two D, anyway. Um, brilliant ideas, loads of content. It's just, it's a blast. But a blast to have that a game that good, 2D Mario, amazing. My number fifteen is uh, Zombie U. Um, talked about it a lot in the last few episodes. Uh, extremely tense, scary, uh, amazing example of what can be done with the Wii U. Um, both in the fact that it's visually impressive and it's got so many cool ideas with the gamepad. Um, the zombie game that I'm sure many many people have wanted outside of uh, Daisy, and um, well 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 worth getting. And uh, the, the what I always say, a brilliant launch game. Yeah. Uh, my number 14 is Zombie U as well, and yeah, every, ditto everything you just said. My number 14 is Max Payne 3, um, exactly the same sort of things as what you said. Uh, shame that the multiplayer didn't quite hold up as much as we thought it would at first, but mm. still uh, an absolute riot, uh, really long for that type of game. Some amazing moments, uh, tense moments, and some great AI as well, really underrated enemy AI. Mm. Um, yeah, my number 13 is The Darkness 2, uh, a game that I'm going to play again shortly and I know that when I do I'm going to think it was sh probably should have been the top of my list um, because it's sorely underrated uh, just a, a staggeringly a, a staggering achievement that people everyone seems to have forgotten about um, subtle at the same time completely mad brilliant absolutely brilliant uh, absolutely need to play that my number 13 is um, Mario U or whatever the fuck it's called um, yeah we, we've waxed lyrical about this game plenty you know what it is it's the best 2D Mario since the old school days. Um, another beautiful launch game. While it doesn't really show off the technical side of the Wii U with the pad, it does cool stuff with Miiverse that no other game really does. Um, and it's just really beautifully designed Mario. Yeah, true that. Uh, my number 12 is two games. I know you're meant to delete one if you put two for one, but fuck it, I don't know what that means. Uh, my number 12 is Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes and Lego Lord of the Rings. I couldn't pick between them. I think them. that's fair. Um, they're... Uh, they're I don't know the only way for them is down Traveller's Tales they made these two incredible games in the same year one of them was open and so heavy on the comedy that it took me completely by surprise brilliantly so and the other one was just so lavish and it replicated those Lord of the Rings movies incredibly well they're just clever smart fucking games and I just I love them both to bits they're superb uh, need to play both of them as well my number 12 is Halo 4 um agree with everything that you said before uh, a very very fine Halo game I still think and having gone back and, and, and looked at some videos that it's not quite as good as um, Bungie's finest but still the fact that they managed to create a kind of facsimile of everything that the world's best single player FPS developer probably I think mm. that's probably fair enough to say yeah. has managed uh, is amazing in its own and it looks fucking beautiful oh god yeah uh, yeah no doubt about it um, my number 11 is Pandora's Tower 
uh, on the Nintendo Wii. Um, another game like The Darkness 2 that I'm going to play it again, and I'm sure I'm going to think it should have been top of the list. And it's another game that was ignored. It came along at the end of the Wii's life, and it didn't deserve to be. It's a strange, wistful, weird derivative of other uh, games such as Zelda, Castlevania, all that stuff. But it did feel like its own thing, and I got totally swept up in it because it's so lonely and just it's, it's an incredibly strange experience that I had with that. But uh, hopefully, I'll talk about it in a bit more depth at some point because I am going to play it again. My number 11 is, is PES 2013, a game that would have been higher had uh, had it not come just before the fucking storm, basically. So I, I played a bunch, uh, haven't been able to play it as much as I'd like since, and we'll go back to it uh, when things die down. Um, love it, talked about it loads. So, yeah, that's the game. That's the uh, the main football game for me. Yeah, same here. Okay, so that was 20 to 11, so let's do the 10 properly. Um, yes. Okay, my number 10 is Forza Horizon. Um, a game that I did not expect to love anywhere near as much as I did. Uh, I, I liked the Forza games, but I sort of had, they, they were very cold and clinical and sort of. I'm not a driving car. I'm not a car racing driving game person, so uh, I didn't expect to fall head over heels with this one as much as I did. But I did. I. It was just revelatory for me. I just thought that they'd really nailed something. They had cribbed a little bit from Criterion, but the fact that they'd created this this sort of semi-fictional world and it was so inviting and. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I loved that game so much. I really did. I think they did a superb job on it. Yeah, it narrowly missed my top twenty, but um, yeah, I had m- moments within that game which were some of the best I've had in any game this year. Strangely, and then maybe should you can argue about your own top twenty forever, but um, yeah, just just strapping into a new car, sticking it in uh, cockpit mode, having the tunes banging on the radio, and just driving. Yeah, you know, into the mountains in Colorado was uh, was amazing. And again, as I say this, I'm like, yeah, this probably should be in my top twenty. But uh, that's the kind of year it's been. Um, ultimately, when playing through the structure of the game, for me, it didn't kind of do it for me as much as just being free and out in the world. But I'm not really faulting it for that. That's just that they, they stuck to the kind of structure that works for that genre very well. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was basically perfect. To be honest, I just I I really loved it. And I'm as I said, I'm not a racing, I'm not a car <laughs> racing game, car racing Pet, game. Uh, yeah, Petrohead. Pet, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. I don't tend to play a lot of driving games, and the ones that I do, I don't fall in love with. But this one was just incredible, and just so incredible to look at. Really. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Amazing to look at. Amazing, beautiful. Um, weirdly, my number ten is Need for Speed Most Wanted, which is the game that's the most obvious comparison to that. Yeah. Ultimately, the uh, the speed and raw fucking energy of Criterion's game won out for me in that particular battle. Always kind of knew it was going to because I'm such a Criterion fan. Um, talked about it before. The a lot of people struggle with um, this game. They're like, you know, they struggle with what is a really kind of unusual and open, truly open structure. Sometimes that might be to the game's detriment slightly, but if you can rewire the way you... We're used to progressing through games in a linear way most of the time, even open world games, you know. You check everything off your checklist and then you keep going. Here, you're just supposed to play in... You're just supposed to play. If you want to do this right now, just play. If you want to do a most wanted race, you know, you're just supposed to play. They they, they started this philosophy of Burnout Paradise and they've continued it here. Um it doesn't like Burnout Paradise maybe sold it better because it was, you know, this paradise, it's luxury, they had the DJ and everything, whereas this is a kind of darker, grittier city, but it's actually a better city to drive around in than Paradise City ever, ever was. Um, and then you've still got those fucking Criterion race events where the cars are flying down the road, uh, whether you're in multiplayer or, or single player, uh, smashing each other off the tarmac, the fucking speed's unbelievable. And uh, if only it didn't have the gay disco version of uh, Barbara O'Reilly by Ugh. Who. Fuck that, forever. Not ju- it doesn't just have one terrible remix of a Who track, it has fucking two. Yeah. That, and I, 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 I never really had much of a problem with Bonkers by Dizzy Russell, but I fucking do now, because those three songs on the loop will drive anyone mental. Yeah, especially uh, it was coming off the Olympics as well, when that was on every two seconds. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah ignore all that. Yeah, yeah, that's. A, I mean, it's it's mm. a, it's, a, it's a joy that game. And the Vita version is very very good as well. I, I, I still want to see that running, incidentally. I, I still yeah, it doesn't that. look. I mean, there are probably games on iPhone that look better, but it's just the fact that you've got the whole fucking game. Yeah. In your hand. Genuine. Yeah, no, I do. I do want to see that. Um, okay, my number nine is Mass Effect Three, um, <laughs> which I thought was. I, I, the, the controversy over the ending I didn't really have that you know I, I took the ending as it was which is quite strange and ambiguous and it didn't really upset me 
Um, I haven't played the the doctored version that came out after, but um, yeah, I just thought it was a really, really it was everything that I wanted from Mass Effect Three. As a, as a huge fan who played Mass Effect Two to completion twice and all the DLC, I was not disappointed. There were a couple of moments when it attempted to offer up kind of Gears of War style action sequences, turkey shoots more or less, and that felt inorganic and kind of half baked and sort of an attempt to perhaps woo action gamers to, to, to the party when it wasn't it didn't necessarily feel right um, but I, I enjoyed every second of that game a big sprawling opus and it was just uh, as good as the second one mm, probably not as good as the second one I, there, there were issues that I had with it but by and large I just thought it was a tremendous game and for, for it not to disappoint me who was just had the highest expectations was so uh, yeah quite something yeah yeah definitely uh, my number nine is uh, Thomas Was Alone. I've talked about it all year on and off. Yeah. Um, a beautiful, charming, uplifting 2D platformer where, about rectangles. That's what it's about. Um, they are actually sentient AI, or AI that's just become sentient. But it's not as... Sometimes, almost anything with sentient AI is almost irritating to me instantly. But this is just... It's very English, very, very sweet. It has this voiceover done by Danny Wallace who is certainly not channeling his Assassin's Creed performance. He is um, he's excellent, reading very snappy, pithy, almost Stephen Fryer's dialogue. Uh, I described it at the time when I talked about it as if uh, Valve was to make an indie game. Um, this is the, the indie game that they'd make. It, it's definitely got a very portally vibe to it. Um, there's probably some tiny little issues mechanically, but it's just full of clever ideas. It lasts way longer than you think it's going to, but it doesn't outstay its welcome. And uh, I highly recommend it if you like video games, and you probably do if you're listening to this podcast, uh, you really should play that game. A lot of indie games get recommended, and they're really like either really esoteric, or they could be really hard, or they're really specific to a, to a genre, or there's something like Hotline Miami where they're kind of trendy, but there's some serious mechanical problems. This is none of that. It's just beautiful. It's sitting on my desktop and I have another chance to try it. But um, It would be a great game to play over Christmas too. Yeah, for real. Okay, well, I think I want to do that. With a cup of tea, a few cups of tea. Genuine, genuine. Um, Okay, my number eight is The Walking Dead uh, in its entirety. I mean, we've spoken... The first episode came out not long after we started doing this podcast and we Mm -hmm. talked about every episode at length uh, repeatedly, so I won't go on, but it really is a triumph. And as I've said before, I think it is a a landmark in terms of... uh, in terms of writing and just the, the, the pa- you know the game as it stands is the kind of thing that I think will and probably has invited a lot more people into video games I mean it, it, the fact that it's on iOS will help but playing on a television uh, you know on a console I think um, I hope they're releasing it in Christmas episode one for free um, in case you didn't know they're doing it on iOS as well and then I think they're doing it on the, on the consoles and then afterwards there's going to be a sale on the, on the subsequent episodes but um yeah, just a gripping story. Um, yeah, it, I mean, we've spoken about it at length. It's just, it really is a triumph. It, indeed. Indeed it is. Uh, yes. Um, another zombie game, but uh, my number eight is Lollipop Chainsaw, which um, ah, just missed yeah. your top 20, didn't it? God, yeah. Uh, really, really it struck a chord with me to the point where I ended up writing a, a piece on it for Eurogamer, um, which I think got slightly misconstrued. Uh, I was talking about, there was a big sexism debate about it, and I kind of tried to cut that down, but ugh, it's tough. Yeah. You know, it's tough to win everyone over when when you're going against the grain like that. However, uh, the game just constantly hilarious. Um, it's been a really good year for funny games. Um, has that pseudo fifty one weirdness, but it's tied into a kind of bit more engaging, perhaps. Okay, engaging is maybe not the right word, but you know, a bit more um, enjoyable aesthetic. Uh, constantly throwing at new ideas in classic pseudo fifty one style. Most of them hit. The odd one doesn't, but most of them hit. Uh, really clever uh, stuff towards the end and then it just goes out with an absolute bang and uh, I fucking loved it I fucking loved it too and again it's not this is why this had to be top 20 instead of it but the fact that it didn't even make my top 20 is ridiculous because uh, what, what, I had so much fun with that and I could I don't think I could have loved it any more than I did but obviously I could um, my number 6 is Dishonored another game that we've spoken oh sorry uh, you know what that was most. What have I just given you? My number six. Yeah, I was about to say. Fuck. Okay. Well, let's do my six. I'll do my seven afterwards. Uh, my number six is Dishonored. Uh, I think it's a masterpiece. We've spoken about it again. It's something we've spoken about at length. Um, I just had the utmost of. I say respect, but it was more like awe. Um, just the way that the whole. Thing, I mean, from the outset, 
you you're only encouraged to play via experimentation, failing, learning the rules that way. There's it was just it felt it wasn't an open world game as such, but it felt like it because they treated you that you know they treated you like an adult, and yet you were never well almost never led by the hand anywhere. It was. Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, awestruck I was by it. The action was great. The stealth was great. The fact that it did accommodate any, po- you know, any using all the tools that you're offered, it accommodated all of those different ways of playing it. And uh, for a game that was owed so much to so many other games, I mean, the world was, rem- you know, reminiscent of a lot of places, particularly um, Rapture. Um, it still was completely felt completely original. And if it turns into a franchise, I hope the quality control. If they manage to make a sequel that's Three quarters as good as this, we'll be fucking laughing. It's a, a hell of a hell of a game. No doubt. Uh, my number seven is a game that uh, at times could have easily been top for me. Is uh, Final Cry Three um, at its highest moments, which are almost always organic and emergent within the world, and not to do with the story. Um, it, it was brilliant. One of the, probably it, it, some of the best gaming experiences that I've had this year was sitting side by side with my bro and uh, that's my actual brother not my fucking mate <laughs> uh, and passing the pan back and forth just uh, doing lives and lives old school style on um, based on camp liberations and not touching the story at all uh, thinking of new ideas together him going I've got a great idea and uh, you know not telling me and then you like you just watch it all happen uh, that kind of thing it's, it's a brilliant game for that and if you get the chance to do that I'd highly recommend playing it like that uh, but yeah, only slight niggles. Um, some of the story missions just aren't very good. There's an escort mission uh, just before you go to the second island, which is fucking shit. Um, I didn't like the stuff in the temple where it turned into Uncharted myself. Uh, I know other people aren't so bothered by that. I did have problems where I was having to rush through that stuff for the review, which is always a problem with uh, open world games, especially when the stuff outside of the story is so good. But um, yeah, a, a, a masterpiece unquestionably. And yeah, I mean... It's seven, but it could so easily be two, if that makes any sense. Well, yeah, to be honest, uh, everything in my top ten and most of my top 20 could have been number one, so hence why these... Yeah, it's been that kind of year. There's not been a... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about after. Yeah, yeah, in genuine. Uh, okay, well, I'll go backwards now and go to my number seven, which was Journey on the PlayStation 3. Um, it's hard to talk about because I don't want to spoil anything. I know one of the most joyous and sort of... Uh, one of the aspects of it that apparently everybody knew apart from me I know some other people have had a similar experience where aspects of how the game panned out were not they didn't know and I didn't know and it just took me it completely floored me just sitting there and looking at the credits kind of dumbstruck that they'd attempted something it's not audacious as such but the way it was delivered I was like wow the word beautiful is so cheesy but I really just uh, there was something hard to describe I mean it's, it's a unique experience and completely emblematic of what I mean that that is why I own a PlayStation 3 because that kind of a game like Journey would not exist on another format um, and you know it is almost indescribable completely unique and if you have a PlayStation you have to get it there's people that I said that to and they still haven't played it and I'm just like you fucking morons just yeah. just download it just play it it's it's the best 10 quid you'll spend on PSN ever probably yeah yeah, yeah, I think you're right there. I think there might actually be a sale, but um, around Christmas time, maybe now, maybe well, it's already happened. But if, if it's less it. than ten pounds and you don't own it, just do it. Take my word for it. Yeah, indeed. Uh, another downloadable game for my number six is uh, Rock Band Blitz. The game that's only problem is the fact that I'm not as good as it uh, as you are. As good as it, as good at it as you are, and and your girlfriend, which is extremely frustrating when there's not many people on your leaderboard, but. Nonetheless, uh, a brilliant uh, harmonics rhythm action game. Um, love the fact it pulls in all your old DLC, which had basically just been sitting there rotting on my hard drive. I'd forgotten it even existed. And reminded me of how captivating and enthralling and engrossing uh, rhythm action actually is. Um, pulls you into music in a way that music actually can't, even in live performance, can't pull you in in this way. I'm not saying it's better. But it completely it just makes you understand music that you love and even appreciate music that you don't love in brilliant ways, and it's just fucking fun as fuck as well. True that, uh, I agree with that. Um, okay, my number five is Catherine. Um, 
which is a game that I think too uh, too many people it kind of shun because it looks impenetrable and it looks difficult and it's not. I mean, it is difficult in the sense that the gameplay is hard because it's a puzzle game, a rock hard puzzle game. Uh, so it's difficult in that sense, but it's not. The narrative is really engaging, really straightforward, and it's a game that sort of looks like it's something and I think it's something else it's actually it looks like it could have been bigger than it was I mean it did quite well for for a niche um, uh, a niche game but it's not actually really underneath that niche and I think that a lot of people could have been uh, could have been swayed by it um, and maybe they will if they see it for cheap again it's a great great thing to take a punt on uh, it, the, the you know as I said the storyline was really engaging um, but the, the puzzling just the, I mean, because it is a puzzle game it's so perfectly crafted that it's it's flexible and just really taxing at the same time. So there's never one solution to any puzzle, but you don't succeed by accident. You can't just dick around. It's like a tightrope walk. Um, and it's just brilliantly unusual and idiosyncratic and just... Pfft. I mean, an incredibly an awe inspiring game, really. It's, it's yeah, I, I'd forgotten that game existed, to be honest, um, until you mentioned it just then. But it's it's really interesting. I remember you you talking about it at the time and being intrigued by it, but not to the point where it's it, there's something about it, man, that, that just that, doesn't appeal. That's to what me, I mean. Even that, though I know, but that's what I, mean. I, I I know exactly what you mean because when when I even though I look at the box, I'm like, normally that's not the kind of thing I'd I'd invest in. Even if I mean I know it gets good reviews, but some really funky stuff from Japan gets great reviews, and they're just they are genuinely impenetrable a lot of the time. Yeah. this isn't. This is a very. This should have been a. It, not a blockbuster, but a bigger cult hit than it's become. And the fact that you've forgotten about it is is, it's it, the, the games are quite disposable, but. It, that's one that deserves it deserves to live on. I mean, it really yeah. was. It floored me. I definitely, me. definitely feel like I need to. I need to at least try it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, just I think to see what it's all about. You you will stay for the story, and then the gameplay will hook you, and you'll be uh, you'll be laughing. But yeah, superb. Mm. Yeah, and that's that, that's going down on my list actually, and right now on the page. Nice. Uh, my number five is Journey, which we talked about. I won't. Um, yeah, it's not, kind of nice you didn't spoil the thing that you happen to not know. I'm sure most people do, but I won't spoil it either. Um, but yeah, for a three, two and a half hour, three hour game, whatever, uh, I sat in my front room uh, playing it on the the bigger screen uh, in in kind of slack jawed amazement uh, with a kind of sense of mild, tingly euphoria almost constantly yeah. throughout the whole thing. There were moments where I was, uh, you know, almost almost feelings of love, which is a really strange feeling. Just yeah, I, know I didn't mean, actually yeah. wasn't in love with anything. It just kind of it was a similar sort of reaction in me moments of of like anguish and uh, you know real kind of puts you through the gamut in a very soft gentle way and i said it at the time if there are better games this year than journey i can't wait to play them and um perhaps there are but i don't think there's a, a more perfect game than journey yeah. and uh, exactly as you said um you, you need to play it i mean you, even if you don't have a ps3 you need to find some way to play it yeah because it's not very long, uh, you can do it in one sitting. It's probably only two hours actually, and uh, yeah, it's just um, I'd recommend it to anyone, and that's not just gamers, fucking anyone. Yeah, no, me too. I mean, there's nothing calculated about it, nothing cynical. And there's mm. nothing, and there aren't <clears throat> there aren't a lot of games like that. There are a lot of games that succeed despite how cynical and sort of calculated they are. But this just, I mean, it's it, it's a rule. I mean, I admire a lot of the. I, I read a lot of really great reviews for it. And I know that I couldn't have written a review for it. If I was reviewing that, I'd be fucking stumped because I wouldn't know how quite to process what it did and how mm. it made me feel and, and what worked. But yeah, it, it is something that everyone needs to play. Um, uh, my number four <clears throat> is SSX. Um, oh, wow. A game that I loved so much more than almost everybody else. And it's a game that I went back to fairly recently to see if it was as good as I thought it was. And it is. It really is. I love it so much. And... I do feel like the lone voice. I'm, I'm surprised that nobody else has sort of been as enthusiastic about it as I have. But um, the the campaign is fine. It's a little bit retro. It's I enjoyed it, but the creation of this online community with this RiderNet system just effectively creating not if not a sport, but just the aura, the sense of event, and the sense of very very sort of gracious competition. I mean, there is a multiplayer now. They patched it to allow for multiplayer. I've got no interest in that. Um, just this. It's still there's still a buzzing community of people, and 
you know, essentially it's gambling, going and doing all this stuff, betting on, the, you know, trying to get golds and get all the money. And then you, every time you sign in, all this money <clears throat> racks up on your screen. So there's that, there's elements of it that should be quite sinister. But as I said, when I spoke about it all those months ago, I turned it on and I felt like greeting imaginary people. It was like turning up on the slopes and going skiing, something I've never done. But there was just a, a sense of camaraderie with all these people that, you know, I just, I, I think it's incredible, incredibly forward thinking and just... I I loved it. I loved it so much, and continue to do so. I've convinced a couple of my friends to get it, and I can't wait. The next next few weeks, stroke months are going to be uh, heavy on the SSX, and uh, I'm well chuffed about that. Yeah, good stuff. I kind of forgotten about that game as well. Um, I never gave it the the multiplayer asynchronous asynchronous multiplayer chance that it deserved after having done uh, done reviews and things. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love that series, man. Love that series. Uh, my number four is another EA game. You, you talked about it already. It's Mass Effect Three. Yeah. Which exactly like you, I wasn't fussed by the ending. I didn't get to the end before um, everyone kicked off, so I was wondering what to expect. Um, I actually enjoyed um, theorizing about some of the stuff that happened there. I, I I don't mind ambiguous endings either. I, I, yeah. That's something that I've never had a problem with. Uh, I think probably a lot of my favorite films have fairly ambiguous or slightly abrupt endings. Um, this, I also had a different ending to most people because I think I fucked up Mass Effect 2 so badly that it just didn't even give me anything at the end of 3, which actually was a better ending than most people got. Um, like a, basically a door opens and, and everyone else's people pile out and something happens. And mine, door door goes, a hand comes out and it cuts off. And you're like, who the fuck was that? Who was it? Much, much better. Um, yeah. But yeah, to the, the game itself, uh, still not massive on the combat, but they, they are vastly improved over two and obviously over one. Um, kind of, they hit high points with the the dialogue and the drama that you know so few games ever manage. And has been it's been a decent year, man, for for, for games writing. It's a really good year um, that's hopefully going to continue. I'm sure it is. But uh, Mass Effect Three kind of came before a lot of these games. That have, that have come out later in the year. Um, yeah, it just uh, it's just Mass Effect, man. You, you kind of covered everything, but I just thought it was superb. I enjoyed almost every minute of it. Had so many great moments throughout. Uh, genuinely felt epic, as did 2. Uh, I probably agree with you that it's not as good as 2. The suicide mission and the lead-up to that is, is amazing in 2. Yeah. But, um, yeah, basically, I just... It, it was the epic that it reported to be, and... I don't know that whole thing about the ending just didn't fucking bother me at all. No. Even if something does have a damn scoop of an ending, which I didn't even think this does, it just like, you know, this is a, it just doesn't bother me. It's all about to use a fucking wank phrase. It's all about the journey. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I just I kind of get that's the ending they wanted. Leave them to it. it you know, treating it as a commodity entire, you know, entirely meant for you. And thinking that you have some kind of creative control of it. And the fact that they buckled made me think a little bit less of them. Because Yeah, it did made me think a lot less of them. It's a honest. shame. It's a shame that people were that... I'm, you know, Pardon my French, but they're fucking dicks about it. Yeah, um, yeah. Be unhappy, but demanding that they go back to the drawing board. It's like these guys have just spent all of your fucking two, three years creating this. And you're telling them that what they did is so shit that you want them to go and... Do it again. I mean, it pissed me off, to be honest. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, it but, pissed me off. But yeah, that fantastic. I thought it was a, a fitting into those three games. It was going to be more, obviously. Mm. But uh, yeah, superb stuff. Um, <clears throat> my number three is Need for Speed: Most Wanted. Uh, you, we, you know, we've you've spoken about it already. <clears throat> I've spoken about it. Uh, we've spoken about it at length on the podcast. Uh, I just think it's so much fun, and I. Again, it's another game that I had the highest of expectations for, and it it met them and exceeded them in a lot of cases. Um, and just again, a forward thinking attitude to, towards multiplayer, similar to SSX. It's the same system, sort of, uh, but inspired obviously by Burnout Paradise. And um, I just I thought it was tremendous fun. Do uh, do I think it's as good as Hot Pursuit? I don't know. I think that was my was that my number one last year or the year before whenever it came out I'm not sure um, I, I wanted that I wanted something streamlined at that point and that's what that was this is open and sprawling and big and uh, but just it's fun whatever you're doing like you said it's you know piss dicking around with my friend in multiplayer just driving around looking for billboards which is something I'd never do going around and looking for collectibles fuck off but just funny stuff happens in that world it's so immaculately created and uh, yeah, I like I like the attitude. I like those guys. I hope it sells well enough because the thought that it doesn't and they can't keep doing what they do any longer just 
heartbreaking. That yeah, just can't I mean, they're, they're, they are now in charge of Need for Speed, so I don't think there's a problem there. But it hasn't done as well as I, they'd hoped, as far as I'm aware. Well, Christmas is the, the real teller, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah, hopefully it'll pick up a bit. It, it certainly deserves to, but that series, is, it's nothing to do with their, them. That series is has been damaged by some very, very far too many games and yeah. some poor games and too many middling games as well. You've got the the decent games like Shift and stuff, but you know the, you, you're really diluting your brand there. I don't know that much about marketing and uh, and branding really, but it does seem that way. Yeah, it's a shame. It would be a shame if the, you know I, I hold Criterion in such high regard because they are a development studio that have never made a bad game, mm. and it would be a shame if that was cast aside because this doesn't sell as much as uh, EA probably expected. But I just it, it's st- once you understand it, once you know how it works, once you know what's on the table, it's a fucking joy, a non-stop joy, and I'm not done with it by any stretch because the the multiplayer is endless. And over yeah, Christmas, I'm not done with it. I haven't even beaten all the most wanted. Oh really? Oh yeah. See, I'm just. I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I've got two more. I'd like to go back, delete my save, and do it all again because it's just mm. so much fucking fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just a, a phenomenal. I knew they were going to deliver a masterpiece, and they fucking did. It's quite cheering for you. Too right. Too right. Um, number three for me, Dishonored. Uh, just finished it. Um, the day before, two days before recording. Um, it was shot much higher. It was actually much lower in my list. I wrote the list before and then played it, and then it shot up from like um, ten, I think, up to three. Um, I talked about it on the podcast briefly uh, last week or the week before about how it dips in the middle, then picks back up. This is why it shot back up. But uh, a, a an amazing game, an amazing game. That I'm kind of fascinated by it, to be honest. Um, mechanically, it's so much fun in so many different ways, and it accommodates all the different ways you want to play. But there's so much else about how it's designed. And uh, again, I talked about it on the podcast last week, but I just want to kind of read about it and not interview the developers, but just kind of listen to I'd love to have a fucking few beers with them and just chat. Yeah. And so and just learn, you know, just listen and learn. I'm never going to make a game, obviously, but just, you know, I'm never going to make a film, but I love listening to great filmmakers talk about their craft. And and this feels exactly like that. These are artists, man. They're, they're, they're absolute artists. In some ways, it's a shame that the game's about killing because... There's so much, you know, like, uh, beauty is the wrong word, but there's so much craft, I'll use craft again, in there, that it's a shame that ultimately if you were to talk to uh, a non-gamer about it, it is a game about sticking knives through people's heads and whatnot, yeah. which uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I fucking, you know, I, I do like, uh, as does everyone, do stuff like that in games, but, you know, you, you, it's difficult to get anyone else to listen to to what is an amazing piece of uh, work when that is the the central conceit but regardless it doesn't fucking matter what those people think anyway um amazing i just can't wait i think i'm going to appreciate the game even more on my run through and hard and uh i'll find more details and read more about the world and read the really written well written texts and um i was even listening to to some of the stuff that's happened to other people which didn't happen in my game which um the game kind of bends to how you play in very subtle ways, just even like leaving out a line of dialogue here or there or how people react to you. It says it's going to do that in the beginning, but some, a lot of games say that and you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But this actually does, listening to other people and, and reading some stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that will go down as, as, you know, quite rightly one of the games of this year and one of the games that people will constantly use as a reference point from now on. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it, it does... It's a game that I think is only going to get better with age, and the more you play it as well. When I play it again, I bet you I'm going to think this should have been my fucking number one, um, and I can't wait to do that. Um, like I said, it's it's so rare for me to piss around in a game that's not completely open world. But in Dishonored, I mean, I remember when I had to write a review, I was like, oh fuck, I've got, I've got I'm like on the second level, and I've played for like ten hours just because you constantly there's so much to do, and yet it's it's all linear as well. Yeah, it's so. I mean, it's it's it's. it's, it's I used the cack-handed analogy before, but it is like a tightrope walk. They they. It's something that shouldn't work, but it's so well designed and immaculately paced that it just works like the fucking clappers. It's mm. uh, just talking about it and thinking about it, it makes me think it should have been my number one even now. But uh, yeah, uh, it's fucking superb. Superb, superb, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going back in. Like I say, even though I've got no time to be replaying games. This is a ludicrous con- concept to even think about doing it, but. Yeah. I think I have to. Yeah, I'm in the same. Feels way. like it, it feels like Fight Club. You got to watch it a second time. You know, yeah. it's nothing like Fight Club, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. True that. 
Uh, so that was your number. That three. was toi, three. Okay, my number two is Far Cry three. Um, again, I said this about Mass Effect, but I had the highest of expectations, perhaps more so because Far Cry two I held in absurdly high regard, um, and it delivered. It really delivered. I've done everything. It's rare. I don't give a shit about achievement points, but I've got the full thousand. But that's because I think achievement points or, or trophies or whatever are kind of a weird... You know, if you drop dead tomorrow, that's like a, a roster of what you spent your time with. And mm. I had to... Even if it was ridiculously difficult to get a thousand on Far Cry 3, which it isn't, I would have got a thousand anyway, just to say that game... I owe that game uh, the, th- the thousand gamer score. But... I think it's despite the blemishes, despite some sort of stumbles in the final the final quarter of the game. I think it's essentially perfect. It's a perfect first person shooter. I mean, you can take um, you can sort of have problems with some of the aspects of the story. Or you can dislike the characters, but uh, it was constantly exciting. Exciting in ways that games rarely are. We live in a, an era where there is so much scripted action and so much stuff where you're not really given freedom to sort of interact with things, but I mean, I could I could probably write a book. It would be a bit of a short book, but of the amount of f- hilarious, it's hilarious as well. There's some of the mm. stuff that just happens is just funny because of the amount of freedom that you have. And you know, I spoke a couple of weeks ago about the half hour thing that should have taken five minutes, and it's just uh, it, it's everything that I wanted that game to be. And as I said, there are problems, but they're so minor that I just uh, I, it, playing it was a melancholy experience because I knew I was getting close to the end and. When it ended, I was like, fuck. The ending was a letdown, but the fact that it was over, I was like, fuck. The, the good thing is that my memory is so terrible. In a year or so, I'm going to play through it again, probably on the PlayStation, just to mix it up a little bit. But Because that's exactly what I did with Far Cry, Far Cry 2. I played it on the PlayStation, and then I did it on the Xbox months later. But yeah, it is as close to perfect as a game of that nature can get, I think, for all its flaws. Yeah, I, I don't really disagree with that at all. And uh, like I said, I'm very looking forward to getting through to the end. But um, yeah, there were a couple of story missions. Not the story itself. I thought the story was, or the way it was delivered, and some of the themes it was tackling were, were very cool. Uh, really liked all the trippy stuff and the the kind of ayahuasca stuff. Yeah. Um, really interesting. Some cool characters in there too. But just yeah, specifically that escort mission, which I died like fifteen times trying to do it, and I was which getting mission? properly fucked off. And which which one is it? Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but you go, but you, the, you get to the second island and you have to just uh, protect a dude who's going to fly you there. And uh, like, it's just it, it, like loads of heavies come, and it's just not, it's just not good. It's just like one of those missions. You're like, this is nowhere near up to the level of the rest of this game. And I think if you sat the people down who designed it, they'd be like, yeah, we should have done better on that one, or you know. We're not happy with that one because it isn't good. It doesn't make sense why it's in there. But I don't want to be negative. The game's amazing. Uh, pro- properly amazing. I just uh, it, it sounds stupid to say it's as close to perfect, but then say there's loads of flaws. The flaws are so minor. They're missteps that don't. They didn't for me anyway. They didn't sort of blemish the uh, the, the, the the game as it stands. I mean, I just it's one of the best first. It's one of the best games I've ever played, and I've told that to people who've asked me if they should get it. It's it's going to be probably in my all time top ten. Honestly, I absolutely loved it, and yet it's my number two. Wow, yeah, it's been it's been a kind of an almighty year. Uh, my number two is uh, The Walking Dead, oh, yeah. uh, another one that's kind of shot up my list um, through not actually playing it. Strangely, it was through watching an episode of the TV show, and I've talked from the first episode. I, I repeated myself, but I'll say it one more time. I thought it was better than the TV show, and uh, it completely confirmed it. There's an episode in the new series which is. Hor- it's just horrible. It's a fucking horrible episode, but stu- har- har- fucking harrowing stuff happens in it. That's fine. The way it sets it up is pure Deus Ex Machina. It- it's shit, the way it sets it up. It's like a fucking crap thing happens, and then, oh, there's a million zombies. And it's like, it was like a ghost train, honestly, this episode. And then stuff happens, and you're like, that is unnecessarily harrowing. Just fuck off for making me watch that basically to the point and I was just like they would have never ever done that in the game the stuff that's harsh in the game the stuff that's memorable and you know the the, the fact that the stuff that's great about the walking dead generally you know the the, the characters are uh, no one's safe you know uh, everything was constructed with such care and attention and diligence and and like uh, respect for the audience in in the walking dead the game uh, by telltale that 
uh, I felt like this was two fingers up from the writers of the TV show. And I'm sure loads of people are like, oh, it's amazing because all this happened. But, you know, if you actually pull it apart, I don't, I can't, I can't hack it. So, yeah, it may be even more appreciative of what is an amazingly written game. And the fact that it's a game of multiple paths and choices makes it even more amazing. Um, I'm so happy for them that they won the Spike VGAs. Uh, I'm sure it's going to take Telltale to another level now. Um, I know the game did very well for them anyway, but I think it's going to do extremely well. And um, it's I talked before about Dishonored being a game that, as wonderful as it is, um, it's almost a shame of what the subject matter is when you're talking to other people. And I don't really care what other people think, but sometimes it's nice to talk to people. I would tell anybody who's who's interested that the walking dead game is amazing and i'm sure that they they would enjoy it because most of it's just about dialogue and choices and, and basic interactions but those dialogue and choices are world class yeah world class yeah i hope that this you know the, the attention that this award hopefully brings them means that it, they can i assume it's budgetary reasons because there were technical hiccups with every episode i mean maybe yeah. it's because they were working to a deadline and it was really nice the fact that it felt like it was coming straight from them to us, it was always yeah, like I like that. And they could play with it based on feedback on each episode as well, which is yeah. cool. Uh, the downside, obviously, was that there were some technical hiccups and stuff. But um, yeah, it's, yeah it's. I think their engine's just quite sketchy as well. They yeah, new... yeah. But uh, aside from that, I just think it's uh, yeah, as I said, remarkable, a, a fucking remarkable achievement and yeah. uh, groundbreaking. It's been, picking up, been picking up number ones in these lists all across the all across the net and the mags, which is just great. I mean, that shows how much people want good story in their games. Yeah, indeed. you don't always have to have a story in your game at all. Revengeance next year, don't care. But when it's done right and you want to do it, you know people will people will listen and people will care. Yeah, true, very true. Um, that was your number two. It was okay. My favourite game of this year, and if you listen to the podcast, you will probably have guessed it already is Rock Band Blitz Mm -hmm. Um, if I'd have been honest or I wasn't worried about boring anybody it would have been on every show we've done since it came out because I have not stopped playing it Um, and it's again it's a I I was a big fan of frequency all I wanted was frequency too all I wanted was something as simple as frequency comparatively anyway Um, and it's so much more than that it's so much more than that it's a strategy game it's a puzzle game Using those um, the new um, perks, I was going to call them. I forget what they're called. The different systems, the, the two which are in, in tandem play off with each other. So well, I can't believe I've forgotten what they're oh, called. The power ups. The, the power ups, yeah. And there's two sets of five, and you can use them in tandem with each other based on the song. So you play a song, you think that works with that. You think there's a long stretch of a, a guitar style, which would mean that that's better. I treated it like a strategy game, and that's you know. I didn't necessarily read. I had no idea that I wanted that, and it's so it's fine tuned. It's ridiculously fine tuned. It's an incredible, an incredible, just incredible. I mean, I'm honestly speechless. It's it's a game that I could. I'm going to be playing when into next year. And the only if I was some kind of millionaire cad, I would (laughs) I wouldn't buy a fucking yacht and a, a, a you know fucking car. I'd buy all of the DLC, the Rock Band DLC, because I just want to play it forever. <laughs> yeah. Essentially Wouldn't it forever. be cool if... Um, I was listening to someone talking about this on a different podcast, but if there was some sort of way, I don't think it's technologically feasible at all, but you could sign up to a subscription service for it, like a £10 a month Spotify type deal, and oh, you could just yeah. get all the songs. Oh, fuck. I don't think I'd leave my house. Yeah. Uh, when he said that, I was like, "That's that's what needs to happen next." But obviously, it's a bit easier with Spotify because you just have to have the file, whereas they have to build no tracks. But it, yeah, I'm sure they're looking into something like that. I hope so. Um, and it's it's a shame if uh, it doesn't seem to have done as well as perhaps they hoped, as no. as is the case with a but lot of games. It sold, bun- it sold a bunch of DLC, I'm sure. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just, it's so much more than it appears to be. And, you know, it doesn't explain itself well, as we said at the time. A lot of people tried it and didn't quite understand what the fuck was going on. Myself included, I didn't quite know where I was at the mm. first. But realising how complicated it is and how there's never been a situation, and I've played that game for fucking hours. And like we've said before, I'm number, or I was number one on a load of songs. But that wasn't me. It felt like actual work went into that. Yeah. I stu- you know, studying those songs and deciding what goes with what and all of that stuff. I'm just like, it's just such a rich, just a rich. It's the richest game they've ever made. Just there's there's so much 
I fucking love it. I just, I love it. it it's, it's so far and away my favourite game of the year. I just, uh, it's one of the, it's the best rhythm action game of all time. Wow. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe I, it is. First Guitar Heroes out there, but yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. It's a, um, yeah. My number one is uh, almost exactly like you. If I was being honest, it would have been in every single week and I had to kind of stop. It's um, New Star Soccer. Oh yeah, my number one. Um, a game that has kind of captured the imaginations of fucking shitloads of people this year. Uh, a brilliantly simple iOS game, utterly, utterly addictive. Um, manages to capture the glory of playing football with 2D top-down graphics. You don't even move your player, and just simply pulling back on a little arrow, judging the distance, judging the the trajectory, and then. As a ball flies across the screen in a different view, hitting the ball with the at the right time, um, they did an update where it added deflections uh, and uh, you could buy boots where it could flick the ball up. Added shitloads to the game, in my opinion. But um, yeah, I talked about it at, at the time. I had a tough summer with my my little my little guy. I had to go to hospital and obviously stuck in hospital for a week. And all I had to to kind of keep my brain from going mad was this game and. Uh, there's no way it couldn't have been my game of the year after that. You know, it, it, it was a, a probably cumulative 20 to 25 hours of playing that while not sleeping in, in the hospital for a week. And, uh, you know, thankfully everything's all right. All fine. Absolutely fine. But, you know, I kind of had, I just wanted to, and I should have really, um, sent the guy some sort of message saying thank you for making something that, in you know, helped me through a fucking tough situation. And it wouldn't have, you know, I had, 20 other games on my iPhone that I tried as well and none of them tell me interest for more than 20 minutes uh, there's something about New Star Soccer which is uh, which is truly brilliant it's not I couldn't call Pro Evo my football game of the year really I, I tried to I'm gonna uh, try to get the uh, the words tried to say it slightly differently when I said it before because I mean, this probably is my football game of the year it's certainly the game that I've played the most out of all games and uh, and will continue to play and the brilliant thing about it is that I know that the sequel is going to be fucking ten times better because there's so much in that he can do. There's so much that he can do to make the sequel better that didn't detract from the original at all. But you just kind of, I was just you just kind of want to be there for him, you know, with him for the ride. And one thing I would never back to Kickstarter. I'd never tell anyone else to back a Kickstarter, and I still won't because uh, in my opinion that's kind of weird for a games critic to do. But if he needs Kickstarter money for the next one. I'm there. I'm there, man. I'm there for you. <laughs> he surely he doesn't know. I'm sure he doesn't, but you never know people's finances, whatnot. Maybe he's got brand ideas. Maybe he's got you know his fucking. You don't know. You don't know, do you? A fiendish crack habit. Fiendish crack habit. Fucking housing <laughs> fell through. You never know. Yeah, true that. Um, yeah, that's a game that I sampled, and it, it got its it dug its claws into me very quickly. And like I said, it was that one evening when I put off eating for about, I think it was about an hour, an hour and a half. And then I realised, yeah. oh fuck, I, I can't be doing this right now. So it's a game technically, and as someone that doesn't doesn't have any time for football, that's quite something. Um, but yeah, it's something that I said, I, 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 I can't get involved in that at the moment. But I'm totally, completely aware of what a brilliant game it is for sure. Uh, yeah, it would lock into you like the fucking darkness and never let you go. I bet. Yeah. I bet it would. Um Okay, well, that's it. That's our 40. It was probably just slightly less than 40. But, yeah, it's our favourite games of 2012. Um, we'll be back for one more show next week, uh, which is going to be the uh, the 10, the 20 uh, most underrated games of 2012. But thank you very much for listening. Uh, I, I suppose you're listening to this around Christmas time, so Merry Christmas and all that. Have a great <laughs> New Year. Um, uh, completely off topic but I have to mention it if you're a fan of Quentin Tarantino I was lucky enough to see his latest film uh, earlier in the week when it comes out I think we'll probably be back when it comes out because it comes out in mid-January uh, but see it on opening day with as many people as you can on the biggest screen it's something else um, but yeah thank you very much for listening um, check out the usual shizzle we'll be back next week for one and then we'll be back at some point in the new year sweet yep the com at John Denzin at Chet Royvis, uh Hit us up on anything. Give us games to play. Um, have a fucking great new year. And I hope you had a great Christmas. And we'll see you in a new year. Peace. Peace. Check you. Check you. What does that mean? <laughs> Cinque. <supposedly>. Cinque. <laughs> <Cinque>. <laughs>
Ultimate Shield. Brings back memories.